Hey guys, welcome. Last week in my non-tutorial video, I talked about Samurado and some of the mistakes that have been made that have led to it being delayed. In this video, I wanna dive a little bit deeper into some of the problems that I think I was neglecting that was a big, big contributing factor here. Samurado has been a trial by fire experience for me as a developer. It has stretched me in all sorts of ways. And while on the one hand, I'm feeling a little bit embarrassed at times that it seems to be taking so long to finish this game. I'm also really glad that I've gone through all of this because these are mistakes that I am not going to make again and they are mistakes that I will never ever forget. And hopefully this video is going to help you guys avoid some of the mistakes that I've made altogether. Now I'm sure that you've heard even with jobs that you really love, like making games, there are parts of it that just suck and you won't want to do them. And marketing is a really common thread there for a lot of developers. You probably don't like it, but you need it for your game to be successful. However, there are certain less obvious things that I think are just as vitally important in order for you to actually reach the finish line and complete your game. And they aren't fun and they're not sexy. They really don't sound all that important on the surface. So what am I talking about? Meetings, okay? And by the way, don't dismiss this just because you are a solo developer. Just let me explain, it'll all make sense to you in just a few moments. I have a certain resistance to meetings. I worked in corporate finance before I was a game developer, and there was a lot of wasted time during those meetings. Half the people didn't need to be there. It took like an hour to convey what could have probably been sent in a really short email. It just, to me, felt like it was a giant waste of everyone's time. And because of that experience, I have a very certain distaste for them. But since my wife and I are running a studio together, I've come to realize just how important meetings are for productivity. Let's actually step away from game dev for a second and talk about movies. If you are making a movie, there are literally hundreds of people involved in the creation process. Director, screenwriters, art director, actors, costume designers, makeup, set decorators, assistants, electricians, boom operators, camera operators, editors, sound designers, composers, and so, so, so many more jobs that I can't even think of. I promise you, if the director did not gather all of those people up to talk about what they needed to do that day, and they didn't plan all of this ahead of time, it wouldn't get done. It would be a nightmare beyond anything that I can even describe to try to throw all of that together without planning, without those meetings. Dozens of different departments need to be choreographed on a daily basis to make sure that they're working towards the same goal. Games are no different. But for some reason with indie developers, we are creative and passionate as hell, but we're not always so good at doing the boring stuff, like meetings. And I think it's really easy to overlook because we're often working alone or with really small teams of people. Why would you need a meeting if you're working alone or just with a handful of people? I promise you, I literally just worked through this myself, so this is very, very fresh for me. You have to take those five minutes at the start of each day to figure out what you need to be working on in order to move your game one step closer closer to being completed. And by the way, this goes hand in hand with planning the right way. And we're gonna talk about how to do that really soon. But this is the most basic thing. And I think it can be really easy to think of it as completely useless and like a waste of time, which is obviously why it's so easy to overlook. Here's the main problem. When you are working on a game, you cannot see the forest for the trees. You're in there tinkering, adjusting, tweaking, bug fixing, polishing, creating enemies, creating puzzles, making levels, whatever it is. And it's weird because it's really easy to find yourself endlessly working on something that feels like you're making progress on your game, but really you're just spinning your wheels. And logic is not your friend here either because you'll find yourself thinking it all needs to get done anyways. What does it matter when I do the things that are on my list? So long as it all gets done, right? And and that sounds like a very reasonable argument. That's why it works. For me, I almost always find when I find myself thinking that thought, I am spinning my wheels and I'm going nowhere. I did an episode on resistance a little while ago and how we can be our own worst enemies when it comes to the creative process. And I honestly think that is what this is. Somehow I have found a task that is keeping me busy working on stuff without actually pushing my game forward in any meaningful way towards completion. That is why what I recommend, and you know I'm being serious because Nikki and I do this exactly, is that every single week, usually on Sundays, we spend 10 to 15 minutes together planning what needs to get done that following week. Who needs what and by when? I'm accountable to her and she's accountable to me. I need art from her in order to actually create new things, but I first have to plan the design of that thing so that she knows what it is that she's making for me. And this still applies even if you are working alone. If you are working alone, then you are accountable to yourself. What are your goals for that week? What content do you need to create in order to hit those goals? What does your schedule look like and where are you
you going to slot in the time to make sure that all of this is going to happen? If you are working on a team, it's the exact same thing. Be accountable to others and to yourself. You do that by focusing on what you can control, which is yourself, not other people, but also being very clear about what you need from your teammates. Be assertive, which means ask for what you need and when you need it by. People are not going to take you as seriously if you beat around the bush. Now, let's talk about good planning versus bad planning because I have experience with both now. Here is an example of what bad planning would look like. You create a massive list of to-do items for your game. And this is essentially every single thing that needs to be done in order to bring your game from where it is today to where it is finished, which is a really great start. And then you stop and you simply just try to tackle as many of those items each week as you can. And you squeeze in as many hours as you can to make sure that you get as much done as possible. It's the weirdest thing because that is somehow both a recipe for burnout and you're not producing content as efficiently as you could be for your game. So what would good planning look like then? Good planning starts with your end goal and then you reverse engineer all the way back to today. Now, if you do it this way, you're essentially creating a roadmap for yourself of what you need to do and by when every step of the way. Good planning is also realistic. For example, Nikki and I really want to take off two weeks for Christmas this year. That two weeks is baked into our Samurado plan. I have it in my schedule off for those two weeks and we're putting in extra work over the next couple of months to make sure that we pump out four extra videos so that we can take off those two weeks without actually missing any uploads because we don't like missing uploads. A realistic schedule includes time for things like feedback and making changes to your game based on that feedback, as well as bug fixes and polish, because those things need to happen. All of this needs to be baked into your schedule. And what I started out with is this massive list of to-do items, and it's dozens and dozens and dozens of items long, and some of them will take a very long time, but then I split them up into what can be done each week. But now I just have a few items each week all the way out till release day. Nikki and I always look ahead by a little bit because for example, I think three weeks from today as I'm recording this right now, we have an item on our list that says 10 enemies need to be complete in the game. Right now we only have three. I need the art for those well enough in advance so that I can actually code in their behavior. So we need to be looking ahead enough to make sure that that happens. And if we didn't plan all of this out, then we wouldn't know when we'd need them by. And if we didn't have our weekly and daily meetings, then we wouldn't be looking ahead and coordinating properly so it would probably be late and things don't always go according to plan obviously so you need to revisit your list every single week and adjust based on where you're currently at you need to be able to plan and adjust accordingly i feel like without these two things without having meetings whether it's with yourself or with your team and without proper planning it's like you're painting with your head in the sand. You're trying to get something done and you're completely directionless because you just don't want to look at it. What I've realized is that the way I was planning before, I was basically trying to make a game like an amateur. I'm wanting to make games like a professional. Planning and planning properly, starting from the end and working back to today and checking in on the progress of where we are at every single day, I think is a really big step towards making games like a professional. I'm just being honest, I've only been trying it for a very short time, but I have seen a massive boost in our productivity from working this way. I want to thank you guys for joining us on our game dev journey, for supporting us by watching our content, by joining the Discord, by joining the Patreon. And that's all I got for you. Like the video if you liked. Bye. I want to give a very special thank you to all of our Hall of Fame patrons, Jakob Yonduk, Christopher Nichols, Sandra Kessler, Fontaine Waite, Brainwaves to Binary, Couch, KB at Bird Tech Games, and Ian Oral, as well as our Early Access patrons, Ken Waite, Mason Crow, Mr. D, Liquid Egg, Alexander Prestis, Jude Greaves, Felipe Gomez dos Santos, Ober, Francesco Lotomata, Bill Guo, Alon on Mars, Alex Friedman, Danny Rathliff, Neil, Ben Kerberger, Lucky Tales, Aiden Serve, Adarsh Kumar, Merler, Anastasia Shimalina, and Petter Yurichek. If you choose to support us on Patreon, you can get early access to all of our YouTube videos, monthly alpha builds, and more.